Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar uh, hosted by HEPI United. Uh, we are a national coalition dedicated to reducing the health disparities associated with hepatitis B by increasing awareness, screening, and linkage to care for high-risk communities across the U.S. My name is Kate Morars. I'm with the Hepatitis B Foundation and Director of HEPI United. Uh, we chair HEPI United with the Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations, and I will be your moderator today. So on today's webinar, we will be discussing improving diversity in clinical trials, uh, particularly why representation, including of persons living with hepatitis B, is essential to research, communication, and outreach. Before we get started, I'd like to remind all participants that during today's webinar, you'll, you will be in listen-only mode. If you encounter technical difficulties online with computer audio, please dial in using the audio phone option on your control panel shown here uh, and with the conference line that's also shown on the screen. And then a reminder that at any time during the presentation, please feel free to send your questions in via the Q&A box on the right hand side of your screen um, and we will be reading them and they will be addressed by the speakers at the conclusion of the presentations. Also, if you have any technical issues, please be sure to send your issue via the question box as well. And I'd like to go ahead and introduce our speakers. Um, first, we will have Dr. Christine Lee, who is with the Office of Minority Health and Health Equity at the US Food and Drug Administration. Um, and Dr. Lee will start us off with um, a presentation on FDA's role in clinical trials and the importance of improving diversity in clinical trials. And then next we will have Rhea Racho, who is with the Hepatitis B Foundation um, as our public policy and program manager. And Rhea will share uh, information on the Hepatitis B Foundation's work related to increasing engagements of communities in the National Institutes of Health's All of Us program. All right, we will jump right into our presentation. So I will turn it over to Christine Lee. Thank you so much, Kate. It's such a pleasure to be here today to be part of this webinar to talk about clinical trial diversity. Um, next slide, please. So the disclaimer here is that this presentation represents only the personal views of the speaker, me, and does not necessarily represent the views or policy of FDA. I have no conflicts of interest to declare. Next slide, please. So a little bit of the overview of the United States Food and Drug Administration Office of Minority Health and Health Equity we discussed in this presentation. Additionally, I'll be discussing FDA policy strategies to support diverse participation in clinical trials. And the third topic that we'll cover today is communication and outreach strategies to improve diverse participation in clinical trials. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the background of FDA's Office of Minority Health and Health Equity. Our mission is to promote and protect the health of diverse populations through research and communication that addresses health disparities. Our vision is to create a world where health equity is a reality for all. And as you can see on the right side, there is a little um, infographic that shows the difference between equality and equity. Next slide, please. So a little bit of what we do here, and I'm not gonna read um, this slide off verbatim, but we do have two arms. We have the research and collaboration arm, which includes intramural and extramural research. We also have the outreach and communication arm, which I'll be discussing a little bit about our program, our, our clinical trial diversity campaign here. Um, next slide, please. So we do have a few priority areas within our office. One of our uh, top priority area is clinical trial diversity. Next slide. So as we all know, and it's really evident in the press, um, clinical trials have had too far little racial and ethnic diversity. Next slide. There are several barriers to diverse participation. This includes mistrust and distrust of the medical system due to historical abuses, it could be as simple as a lack of awareness on the patient's part, um, inadequate recruitment and retention efforts, 
the lack of minority physician researchers and clinical investigators, um, unless the same language is spoken, there's often a barrier. Misunderstanding of racial and ethnic minorities beliefs and values that contribute to the decision making process. Lack of culturally and linguistically appropriate communication. Additionally, there is this perception that minorities do not want to participate in clinical trials. Also, physicians and providers, because of this perception or misperception, they may not talk to their patients about clinical trials. Additionally, there are issues along access and privacy concerns. Next slide, please. So why is it important for diverse participation in clinical trials? Well, racial and ethnic minorities have been historically and remain underrepresented in clinical trials. This need of representation to study the effects of medical products in the people who will ultimately use them. Racial and ethnic minority populations may respond differently to certain medical products, for example, heart failure medications. For example, in the Asian community, we might um, lack an enzyme such as alcohol dehydrogenase. How does this react you know, to different medications? Additionally, understanding is important to understand health disparities. Diseases that occur more frequently or appear differently in diverse populations. Next slide, please. So what does the research show? Well, research shows, generally speaking, minorities will participate if they are asked. For example, 91% of African Americans who were surveyed in one study would consider participating in a clinical trial, and that mistrust is becoming less of an issue. Among immigrant Latinos, 71% of those surveyed who knew what a clinical trial was would consider also participating, to, uh, sorry, consider participate, so participating in a cancer clinical trial. Additionally, one study shows that there is no difference between African Americans and Hispanics willingness to participate in research compared to whites. Next slide, please. So what is the take home message here? The take home message here is for clinicians to ask patients to participate in clinical trials. Next slide, please. So what is FDA's role in clinical trials? Well, you may or may not be aware, but for data section 907, which is the report, reporting of inclusion of demographic subgroups in clinical trials and data analysis and application for drugs, biologics, and devices. This report is on our website as well as the action plan that was posted in August of 2014. So what does FIDESA Section 907 Action Plan actually say? Well, there are three major priorities in FIDESA 907. Priority number one is to improve the completeness and quality of demographic subgroup data, collection, reporting, and analysis. So it focuses on the quality. So what have we done in this area? We have released FDA guidance documents, including the collection of race and ethnicity data in clinical trials. Additionally, priority number two of FIDESA 907 is the identifying barriers to subgroup enrollment in clinical trials and employ strategies to encourage greater participation, thus to increase participation in clinical trials. So along the realm of this, we have had several public meetings and also we've developed tools to support diverse clinical trial participation. Priority number three is making the demographic subgroup data more available and transparent, increasing transparency. And this is where our drug trial snapshots has come in. And I'll describe each one of these in more details in the next couple of slides. Next slide, please. So as promised, I'm gonna talk about priority number one here. Quality. So guidance documents for industry are um, on this page, as you can see. So within the gu guidance documents, it says that FDA expectations are that sponsors and role participants who reflect the demographics for clinically relevant populations with regard to age, gender, race, and ethnicity. A plan to address inclusion of clinically relevant subpopulations should be submitted for discussion to the agency at the earliest phase of development and for drugs and biologics no later than the end of phase two meeting. Next slide, please. So points to consider subgroup population. 
For potential race and ethnicity differences relevant to the evaluation of medical products for the disease condition, consider the prevalence, the diagnosis and treatment patterns, previous subgroup inclusion and past blood studies for target indication, and are there any clinically meaningful subgroup differences in safety or efficacy? Next slide, please. So within our 2019 draft guidance issued by CEDAR and CBER, this talks about broadening the eligibility criteria to increase diversity in enrollment. It also addresses study design and conduct considerations for improving enrollment. Next slide, please. Additionally, on top of the guidance document, the Office of Minority Health and Health Equity seeks innovative pilot projects or funding of projects that contribute to identifying and understanding racial and ethnic differences with respect to safety, efficacy, and effectiveness of FDA-regulated products. Here are some of the examples down below. So moving on to priority number two, participation. As promised earlier, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the Clinical Trials Multimedia Campaign. This campaign was developed to raise awareness around the importance of diverse representation in clinical trials to ensure medical products are safe and effective for everyone. What are some of the motivators for the campaign? Some of them include to add positive reinforcement as to why minority health issues matter, educate consumers about key issues, and help stimulate dialogue among peers and patient providers. Here are some of the, the tools that we have available on our website. We have videos, we have newsletters and e alerts, we have our webpage, we have podcasts, we are quite active on social media, we have a communication tool gift toolkit, and we do have graphics. Some of the videos include the video here, which Latinos, um, can make a difference in clinical trials. The next uh, video here is Shirley's story. Um, Kate, can we show this story, please? Kate? Oh, yes, it's coming up right now. Great. And the video has concluded, Christine. Okay, thank you so much. Next slide, please. Additionally, we have videos on our website that include veterans in promoting veterans in clinical trials. Beyond the, the videos that we have available, we also do have additional resources, including pamphlets and one-pagers. Some of our health equity stakeholders include those on this page and including the HEPI Foundation. Next slide, please. Once again, the take-home message is ask patients to participate. Next slide. The last topic that I'll be talking about today is our priority number three of Fidesia 907, which is transparency. To increase the transparency of clinical trial data, um, there is the drug trial snapshot that's available also to the public online, and it is led by the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, and the lead is Melina, Melina Lolik. Here is an example of the drug trial snapshot summary re report from 2015 to 2019. As you can see here, the percentages are below under each one of the subgroup classifications. However, I do want to mention that this is an aggregate, so we do not know 
what drugs were approved that year. So if more rare diseases were approved or not. Next slide, please. Additionally, there is information provided in FDA-approved product labeling directed at specific races and ethnicity. Some of the examples are below here. Next slide. We do have a call to action. This call to action is to talk to your network or stakeholders about clinical trials, to help distribute FDA materials, display the posters in your office, clinic, or hospital, send out announcements via your newsletter or social media, stay up to date by visiting our website and following us, up, following us on social media, sign up for email alerts, and get engaged. Make your voice heard. Communicate your issues and ideas to us at public meetings and respond to docket comments. Next slide, please. Additionally, here are some examples of the summary report from the drug trial snapshots that are available online. Next slide. Once again, please connect with us either through Twitter, email, um, webinars, um, any other ways that you can please connect to us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all that, those great resources, Christine. Um, so now we're going to move on to our next presentation. And uh, just a reminder, if you have any questions um, or comments, please feel free to continue to send them in the chat box. All right. And I will turn it over to Rhea. Thanks, Kate. Um, hi, everyone. So to broaden our topic a little bit today, I'm going to um, talk, I'm going to highlight the All of Us Research Program of the National Institutes of Health, or the NIH, and look at how important improving diversity is not only in clinical trials themselves, but also more generally in health and medical research. So I'm going to provide a brief overview of the program and how the HEPI Foundation and some of our HEPI United partners have gotten involved over the past couple of years to help ensure that communities who have historically been underrepresented in medical research are engaged in the All of Us Research Program. Uh, but before going into the program details, it's important to know for context what precision medicine is. Uh, so precision medicine is healthcare that's based on you as an individual. It's a newer approach for disease treatment and prevention that takes into account individual variables in lifestyle, socioeconomic factors, your environment, and your biology or genetics. Um, precision medicine is about improving health, treating disease, and finding cures in a way that acknowledges those unique attributes of, um, of each person. Um, and how the interaction of different factors like our genes and the environment or our lifestyle and behavior, um, how all of that interacts to impact our health. Um, this, looking at these variables also means that some medical treatments that might work for one person may not work as well for another person. So precision medicine is a shift from traditional one-size-fits-all approaches to finding uh, more effective individualized healthcare that's designed in a way for each of us to be able to receive the best care possible based on our unique makeup. Um, another way to put it is that precision medicine aims to deliver the right treatment for the right person at the right time. And the ultimate goal is to be able to produce more accurate diagnoses, earlier detection, and better prevention strategies and treatment choices. So the All of Us Research Program um, is a historic long-term effort to collect and study data from 1 million or more people in the United States in an effort to build one of the world's largest and most diverse databases for health research. The program is expected to at last for at least 10 years and aims to advance precision medicine by collecting this data from diverse populations and being able to look at how differences between us might lead to different types of treatment. Um, the All of Us program began enrolling participants in 2018, but it's part of a broader precision medicine initiative that the NIH first launched in 2015. The goal of All of Us is to accelerate health research discoveries and medical breakthroughs to uncover ways that we can deliver precision medicine. So by working with participants from all across the country and collecting different types of information over a long period of time, 
um, and building all of that into a platform that is open for researchers to access. The program hopes to enable these new kinds of individualized healthcare, treatment and prevention methods that can improve the health for all of us. People who join will be asked to provide information about their health and habits through surveys or by pro providing bio samples um, and answering questions about what it's like where they live, what kind of access to healthcare they have. And by looking at these patterns, researchers may learn more about what affects people's health. So the mission and objectives really revolve around uh, both the, partic or all the participants as well as researchers and engaging partners in a way that benefits um, health providers, researchers, and the people that are involved in sharing their health information. So some innovative aspects of all of us um, really, it really focuses a lot on the importance of collecting diverse information and having diverse participation. The core values of the All of Us Research Program state that particip participation is open to all people living in the United States who want to sign up, um, that participants reflect the rich diversity of the US, participants are partners and not research subjects, um, and that trust will be earned through transparency of the information so that participants also have access to the to their own information and insights into their health data that they do um, consent to provide through the All of Us Research Program. Um, data will also be accessed and accessible broadly for research pur purposes. Security and privacy will be of the highest importance and the program um, aims to be a catalyst for positive change in research. Um, the, it's very critical um, within the framework of the All of Us Research Program that um, the participants do reflect the diversity of our country in order to produce meaningful health outcomes for communities that have historically been underrepresented in biomedical research. And this is really important because we know that where we live, how we live, and our backgrounds can all have an impact on our health. And because we know, um, as Christine mentioned, that many groups have been left out of research and clinical trials in the past, there's our, currently already a lack of information on certain populations. Researchers know less about um, minority populations' health and what treatments can be effective. So by building the All of Us Research Program and hopefully engaging more than 1 million people over 10 years, um, researchers can be more, can learn more about what makes some people sick and what keeps some people healthy um, and how to target those right treatments to the right people. Some of the kinds of questions that the All of Us Research Program aims to try to help answer over time are things like how can we prevent chronic pain that affects more than 100 million people each year? Um, how can we develop better treatments for diabetes which affects almost 10 percent of Americans um, and disproportionately impacts some communities? Um, how can we drive local disparities interventions that work more sustainably? Uh, in, so precision medicine actually has seen some successes already in certain cancer treatments. And so the idea is that we'll be able to make similar breakthroughs for other disease areas. So if, just to give an idea of what participants um, are asked to do. Some potential activities if you do enroll in the All of Us Research Program include um, authorizing the sharing of your electronic health records with the All of Us Research Program, answering occasional surveys. Um, there are six initial ones and some ad additional surveys that get rolled out depending on um, if you meet certain criteria. Uh, you also might be asked to submit physical measurements and bio samples. And in the future, the All of Us Research Program, or currently they may already be pilot testing it, um, are, are ways that the collection of data can be integrated in things like syncing with your Fitbit or sharing data through apps on your phone that track your exercise. Um, because all of those things, again, can be factors that researchers can look more closely at to see how that's impacting your health and how that might contribute to um, somebody's likelihood to develop or not develop a certain disease or to respond to different treatments. 
Um, the next slide shows uh, just some examples of some of the factors that um, researchers can look at depending on how much information a, a participant chooses to submit. Um, so if a person does enroll fully in the All of Us Research Program, um, and if they do fill out uh, multiple surveys and share their electronic health records, you may be able to pull out information um, or they will be contributing information around these different environmental, social, behavioral, and biological or clinical um, aspects. So even things like knowing how close a person lives to busy highways, what the weather is like where they live, if they're exposed to occupational hazards or air pollution, what their water quality is like um, on the environmental aspect. For biological um, considerations, the All of Us Research Program is aiming to collect data around um, medications that a person is currently on. Um, again, their electronic health records, and then some social factors that may be helpful in developing precision medicine is looking at education level or family structure, the amount of stress someone may report having, um, your financial means or the size of your social network. And then some behavioral aspects um, could be around data, it, uh, data around how much a person exercises, what they do or don't eat, um, drinking habits, prior drug use, smoking history, things like that. So um, all of those things, again, uh, this is the first time, especially with uh, the goal of having 1 million or more people submit this kind of data can make, um, can go towards developing one of the most diverse and really rich data sets for health research and to answer very specific targeted questions that we have not been able to answer before. Um, on the next slide, there's just a sort of just a, a process or timeline of how um, the idea of how all of us can eventually help lead to medical breakthroughs and discoveries. So starting with, um, you know, it all starts with having enough people willing to share their health data online. Um, there's a lot of time and effort of being spent on making sure that this data is protected um, and is secure. So that is a big aspect of the All of Us Research Program. Um, and then over time, um, approved researchers will be able to access the database to see um, this de-identified and aggregated data and be able to select through and look at, look, search for different um, conditions or um, or any of the factors or the types of data that was on the previous slide to see if they can, um, if there's enough data there for them to be able to do any research into certain diseases or treatments. Um, also, during this process, as the All of Us Research Program platform grows, um, the hope is that there's more that participants will receive as well on the other end. So instead of just per, um, contributing their information, um, they're active partners in the All of Us Research Program and will be able to log into a portal and see information about their health data, um, which may help them gain more insights about their health that they may not have had otherwise just um, without being without participating in the program. Uh, and then hopefully these uh, studies can help inform uh, more broader efforts to develop, to advance precision medicine in the long run and maybe help create better tests to buy, tests for diagnosis and treatments for um, different chronic diseases, especially um, perhaps ones that do impact certain population more and where there hasn't already been enough research to, um, to address those health disparities. So to accomplish all of its goals, um, the All of Us Research Program, the NIH has many, many partners um, with leading institutions, with community and national organizations, and with um, health, healthcare provider and participant representatives representatives across the country. Um, 
So there are health provider organizations, the participant center, there are champions that help raise awareness about the program, and then there are community engagement partners. Um, and the, the Asian Health Coalition is one of five national All of Us community engagement partners that were selected because they do have a reach uh, or they, they serve diverse communities and have the capability of helping um, people from these communities learn about the program, to join, to stay engaged in the program, and also to, to engage health or to engage um, and educate healthcare professionals about the program. So in addition to the Asian Health Co Coalition, who um, does focus on outreach and education to Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander populations, the other community engagement partners include um, the Delta Research and Educational Foundation, um, which is focusing on the African American population, an organization called 50 Forward, which is focusing on engaging older, rural, and homebound populations in all of us. The National Alliance for Hispanic Health, which does focus um, on engaging Hispanic and Latino communities. And then the San Francisco General Hospital Foundation, which target or which um, focuses on engaging and enrolling sexual and gender minorities. Uh, but the Asian Health Coalition, as Part of their role as a community health or as a community engagement partner has convened and leads a network of, of additional national and community partners that represent the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander populations across the US. Um, and that's where uh, the Hepatitis B Foundation and Hep United's role comes in. So we have joined the um, the Asian Engagement and Recruitment Corps, or the ARC, which is composed of seven local community-based organizations um, and two national organizations. So the Asian Health Coalition has, again, has, has convened this group of partners, has provided training and guidance and leadership, um, and has helped our organizations go out into the communities that we serve and try to um, find what types of engagement strategies and educational materials would motivate people to join the All of Us research program and what kind of messaging helps um, helps bring people in to feel like their involvement and their participation can really make a difference in their community and to um, show the importance of having representation in the All of Us program. Um, so now I just wanted to share a few um, of like the graphics and outreach materials that have been developed and are being tested at um, on social media and in at in-person community events. Uh, the first graphic on the left has the phrase or the tagline, we will be invisible no longer. So really speaking directly to um, the fact that Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander populations, along with other minority communities, have long been underrepresented um, in medical research. And so this is appealing to the idea that um, we want our communities to be heard, to be seen, and to be part of um, health research because it can impact um, future generations, can impact our current health, but can also help pave the way so that our children and their children may have access in the future to more targeted and more precise and effective treatments for the diseases that do impact our communities disproportionately. And that same thought is echoed um, in, the, in the quote on the right side of this slide. Um, so, so some of the messaging that we have to try to recruit and engage communities is, is speaking directly to that, that we all want our kids to live healthier lives than we did. So if there's an opportunity to contribute to this huge um, research program that's aiming to improve health outcomes for all of us, then, um, you know, that's a greater cause that we could be contributing to just by joining and sharing health records, answering some surveys. Um, I also wanted to highlight one fact sheet uh, from the NIH that is specifically targeted around, um, targeted to use with Asian American um, communities whenever we're talking about the All of Us Research Program. 
Um, so it does talk about more generally why some communities have not been part of research in the past and why diversity now is so important for the All of Us research program to be successful. Um, and then it specifically looks at, asks the question on this fact sheet, why is the Asian American community important to all of us? Um, and it goes into talking about how by joining the program, because there has been underrepresentation and we've been left out in the past, um, also that when Asian Americans are included in research that they're, um, it's often not taking into account differences within the Asian American community itself and different ethnicities in this larger group. So by the more, um, the more people we can get from different communities to join, um, the better the data will be so that the studies can be better informed and uh, researchers can understand health conditions that are more common in the Asian American community. And the last slide, uh, this is just an example of um, a blurb that we put in the Happy United newsletter recently. So um, I guess indirectly we've been talking about this, but I haven't, you know, one way that we tie it back to the communities that we serve is that with hepatitis B being um, a disease that does disproportionately impact Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, um, this is an area where perhaps the All of Us Research Program in the future could make um, a big difference if there are enough people who have enrolled in the program who can provide information that sheds some light on um, the effectiveness of certain treatments and things like that around, around hepatitis B. So we included that in one of our recent newsletters. Um, and some other activities that HEP United partners have been involved in. So with um, Pennsylvania, with our partners in Hawaii and one of our partners in Texas. They've all engaged with us on doing in-person events at um, screening events or educational awareness events, anything where the uh, where this target population um, is gathering and where we're, we're already doing health education. We have tried to integrate information about the All of Us Research Program into those activities uh, and to really highlight and bring to attention this issue that many people may not be aware of um, and try to see what, what messaging and what um, strategies really work with making the All of Us Research Program um, an accessible and interesting opportunity for Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islanders to join. Um, and I think that's okay. So that's that's the last slide. Um, I guess in short, the All of Us Research Program, you know, it's a it's ongoing and it's still seeking um, participants from all over the country, uh, from all types, from all backgrounds, all ages. Um, and so, if you're interested in learning more about this program, you can go to joinallofus.org. Um, you can also check out joinallofus.org slash Asian Health Coalition. Uh, the link is in the slides to learn more specifically about the outreach that's being done for, um, for the Asian American communities. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Kate. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Rhea, um, and thanks so much, Christine. Um, as you know, um, as you may know, um, hep hepatitis B disproportionately impacts um, racial ethnic minorities, including Asian Americans, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders, as well as African communities and other Eastern European communities. So um, it's um, th these are really great programs um, that you both and the resources that you both have shared um, that really is relevant to pe people living with hepatitis B. Um, I wanted to, before we jump into our questions, um, share a couple of new things uh, that the Hepatitis B Foundation has on uh, on our website uh, related to uh, hepatitis B treatments and clinical trials. Um, the first is a drug watch. Um, so uh, on hepb.org, um, and the website is there, if you go to hepb.org, um, we have a drug watch page. Um, if you are a person living with hepatitis B or working with persons um, to test and treat um, uh, patients, 
Um, this is a really great resource. It's updated, uh, I think it's updated weekly. Um, so you can find, um, this is a screenshot from the page, not only what are the current FDA approved treatments for hepatitis B, but also, uh, and keeping an eye on major uh, research uh, treatments that are um, going through uh, research right now, different phases of research and what's coming down that pipeline. And on this next slide is our newest resources. We're really excited. Um, this actually just launched this week. Um, it's our clinical trial finder. Um, so it's accessible at www.hepb.org um, in the treatment and management tab, um, and then scrolling down to clinical trials. Um, so this is um, a partnership between the Hepatitis B Foundation and Antidote. Um, so it's a database of clinical trials. Um, and what you can do is click the start button here um, once you go on that page and answer a few questions. So these clinical trials, you can search for clinical trials in your zip code and you can search for trials related to hepatitis B, liver cancer, and hepatitis delta. Um, so you can choose what types of trials that you're looking for. Um, once you type in your zip code, um, it'll ask you a couple of more questions um, just to narrow down the search, uh, whether you're a male or female, for example, or your age group, and then it'll pop up with a list of trials that are closest uh, to your zip code. So uh, please feel free to uh, visit and check it out and test out the new clinical trial finders, and we would love to get your feedback on, on that as well. All right, um, so now we're going to turn to our uh, questions. Um, so again, if you have any questions for um, our speakers, please feel free to type them into the chat box um, and then we will um, answer them as they come in. Um, so one question that we had um, for Christine. Um, as you know, a lot of, I think one of the barriers um, to uh, accessing clinical trials uh, for diverse populations may be uh, language barriers. Um, so question is, um, as it relates to FDA resources and uh, related to clinical trials, um, does FDA have resources that are accessible in other language in terms of um, outreach to patients who are looking to access clinical trials? That's a great question, and yes, we do. We have a language access program. Currently, we only have English to Spanish, but we are working on other languages right now. Great. And then sort of related to that, a lot of community organizations um, that are working on hepatitis B, um, to, to address hepatitis B are working, are hold, hosting a community testing events, for example. Um, and they do interact with a lot, follow up with pay, uh, individuals who have a positive test um, and as an organ and as an opportunity to con for them to connect um, people to clinical trials. Um, how do they get involved or connect with FDA um, and provide those resources to to those individuals? Um, the way to connect to us, I think the easiest way is through our email. Um, that was on the last page. So we'll, we're more than happy to to chat some more. Okay, great. Thank you. And then for Araya, um, for the All of Us Research um, Program, um, are there opportunities for individuals to enroll in person? Actually, so I believe there's a few a few ways people can enroll in person. Um, the NIH has a schedule of what they call mobile engagement units, I believe, or mobile engagement something, uh, where they go and they travel to different cities and even college campuses we've seen, uh, and they bring an exhibit about the All of Us Research Program and what it all is. And they have, in some of these 
stops, they have a way to enroll on site. So um, there may be a schedule of this on joinallofus.org um, if it's coming to a city near you. And also, if you look at um, the community engagement partners, the list of partners on the website, you can find out and see if there's uh, any organizations in the area that can help link you to um, signing up. So all of it, though, has, is kind of designed to be done easily from home. If you have access to a computer, um, there's just an online um, consent form that you have to fill out, and you can uh, come back to the surveys later. You can decide whether you not whether or not you want to also enroll and go through with doing um, more surveys or providing physical measurements and bio samples and things like that. Um, but starting out, it's it's very simple to do from um, any computer from your from home or from work. And then the other question is how are there um, how do organizations um, get other organizations, how, how would they get involved in helping to promote the All of Us um, program? That's a good question. And I know that um, the more people, the more organizations, the more people we have um, helping to spread the word, the better. And so if specifically, if you are um, an organization serving Asian American, Native Hawaiian, or Pacific Islander populations, you can plug in to, uh, you can contact me and I can connect you with the Asian Health Coalition since they are the lead partner with the NIH working on engagement to, um, to those communities. Uh, but they also, I think, would be able to hook, to, to link other organizations that may have reach in different communities and are interested in promoting the program to get involved. So um, yeah, so that's one way to do it. And there are also materials that are being developed um, right now in different languages. Um, actually, I believe that the website, the entire allofus.org website right now is available in Spanish. And part of what our um, Asian Engagement and Recruitment Corps is working on um, is trying to determine which languages, which Asian languages or Pacific Islander languages would be most useful to also develop materials, outreach materials and uh, messaging for in those languages. So since this is a very long, um, long-term effort, um, they're still rolling out a lot of those things. And um, the NIH, you know, they have a lot of, um, they have a lot to go through in their process to have their materials officially approved and things like that. But they are in the process of collecting feedback on what, um, what would be useful for organizations in terms of handouts and materials and in what languages would be helpful. Thank you. Um, and then for Christine, um, you had shared a slide earlier, and I think you said they were averages. Um, and I think it showed um, the trend in years in terms of participation by different community populations that I think have participated in clinical trials. Um, if someone is looking for specific information about, say, for example, the trends for uh, hepatitis B or a liver cancer trial. Uh, is that something that the FDA has or do you know where to access that type of information? Yes, so just so everyone knows, this information only goes back a couple of years. Um, but if you do want more information on drugs or disease states, just go to drug trial, I'm sorry, drugsnapshot.org and you should be able to pull up all of that type of information. But once again, it only goes back a couple of years. So if there were no Hep B drugs that were um, released during that time, you won't be able to find anything. Got it. So it's drugsnapshot.org, you said? Uh, drug trial snapshot. Drug trials. I'm sorry. OK. Drug trials. No, and I'm just sending that to the audience. Great, thank you. Um, and then I think there was a question that came in from an international participant. Um, and I, part of the question is, um, is there a trial center in the UAE? Um, Christine, do you know if that's something that NIH or the, the federal, 
agencies would have information on? If this person wants to send me their question via email, I can have a redirect it to the right person to answer it. Okay, great, thank you. All right, um, and then I'm seeing if there's any other questions that are coming in. Um, and will the slides be shared? Yes, we will be sharing the slides um, on, they will be posted on our website. Um, and a recording will also be shared as well. All right, it looks like we don't have any other questions. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, thank you to everyone who was able to join us today. Um, Christina and Rhea, thank you so much for sharing um, this rich information and for participating in today's webinar. Um, we hope that you all found this very informative and valuable to your work. Um, and then as Christine's take home message is, <laughs> Christine, what was that? Do you want to um, share the take home message one last time? Ask participants to participate in clinical trials. Yes, um, please spread the word. Um, and if there are any follow-up questions, um, our contact information is here. If you'd like to connect with either Christine or Rhea, please email us at connect at happyunited.org. Um, and um, lastly, um, we'd like to invite everyone to complete an online evaluation um, when you close out of the webinar um, to get feedback um, and ideas for future webinars. So thank you everyone, have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.